Hi, I'm Dee at Kennedy Space Center in the Apollo Saturn V Center. I'm standing beside the historic Kitty Hawk, the command module for the Apollo 14 mission, commanded by Alan Shepard. The Kitty Hawk, like all of the Apollo capsules, returned to Earth by coming very quickly through the atmosphere, deploying some parachutes, and then splashing down in the ocean. One of the most dangerous parts of the mission is that re-entry into Earth's atmosphere because the spacecraft is traveling so fast. Put your hands together like this. Rub them as fast as you can. What do you feel happening? If you said you feel heat, you're absolutely right. That heat is caused by the friction of your hands rubbing together. Now, if you rub your hands fast enough, are they going to burst into flame? Yes, they are. The good news is you don't have to worry because you can't rub your hands that fast. But coming through the atmosphere at over 15,000 miles an hour, spacecraft get very, very hot, and they do actually burst into flame. We don't want to cook our astronauts, so we have to coat the spacecraft in material that we call a thermal protection system, or a heat shield. On the Apollo capsules, just like the new Orion capsule, the heat shield was what we call ablative, meaning that it was designed to burn off on the atmosphere, re-entry, but not the whole thing would burn off, just the outer layer of it, so that inside, the astronauts were kept cool and comfortable. Today, we're going to teach you how to make your own heat shield and test it. Now to build your heat shield at home, you're going to use items that you already have on hand, and it doesn't necessarily have to be the same things that I'm using. Today I've got some aluminum foil, I've got some cotton squares, a piece of foam from an old tray, a little bit of modeling clay, and I'm going to use these plastic cups for my test capsules, and I've got some chocolate pieces I'm going to use as my astronauts. Now the Kitty Hawk and the other Apollo capsules used an ablative heat shield because they were actually on fire. We don't want to use fire for this. Our heat source is going to be a blow dryer. So it does get hot, but it also there's a lot of air blowing around. So what I've done in each of my capsules is I've glued in a little piece of paper just so that it doesn't blow around and so that the chocolate is sitting on the paper instead of the cup. That's really just to make it easier for you to see. Your heat shield is going to be just a little bit bigger than the top of your cup. If you want to draw a line around, you can, but you really don't have to, as long as you just kind of make a square about that big in the middle. What I decided to do for the heat shield that I've already tested, so I know it's a success, is I started with a little bit of modeling clay, and I smushed it out as flat as I could get it, and just kind of put it there in the middle. You want to make your heat shield lightweight, but sometimes you just need to add something like the clay to give it that added bit of protection. The next thing that I put on my heat shield was a piece of styrofoam. And then I took some cotton, and I happened to have cotton squares. If you have cotton balls, those will work also. And I laid that out here. And then I folded the foil over to just kind of sandwich all of that in the middle. Now, on mine, the shiny side is inside, but you can do it both ways. See which one works better. Does it work better with the shiny side inside or the shiny side outside? Now it's time to test my heat shield. Now any science experiment needs a control so that you can compare your results with and without the heat shield. I'm going to do this first with the heat shield and I'm going to just lay that over the top of the cup. Can you see the chocolate still inside there? And then I'm going to take this hair dryer, I'm going to get the other one out of harm's way, and I'm going to put this hair dryer on high, and I'm going to hold it there for 30 seconds. Ready? After 30 seconds, I'm going to take the heat shield off, and I'm going to be very careful because it might be hot. Yeah, it's kind of warm. And then I'm going to look at my astronaut. Oh, look. He's not melted at all. See how the white is still completely clear of the chocolate. So my astronaut did very well with the heat shield. Let's see what happens without the heat shield.
So once again, I'm going to set everything up the same. The only difference is this time no heat shield. I'm going to hold the hair dryer at the same height for 30 seconds. Wow, you can really see a difference here. The capsule didn't even make it and the astronaut is completely melted. Mmm. Remember to have your parents' permission before you try something like this, but use different materials in the construction of your heat shield and see if you can really protect that astronaut. This is Dee at Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex, reminding you to stay safe and have a great day. Keep looking up.